Section 3.2 is addition and subtraction of whole numbers. Um, chapter 3 is often a favorite of um, at least 3.2 and on. Um, is often a favorite of our elementary ed folk in here, like the ones who want to teach the little ones, right? Like first and second graders, uh, maybe even third graders when we get into section 3.2 and, or see, uh, 3, 3 and 3, 4. Um, because this is like direct application of how you can go about using um, addition and subtraction methods to teach, okay? So there's a lot of really good hands-on ways to explain method kind of things in this particular section of material. Um, so we're going to start 3.2 with what does it mean when we talk about addition. So by definition, if you have two disjoint sets, A and B, and if the number of items in set A is little a, and the number of items in set B is little b, then the, subs the, the small values a plus b is the number of items in the union. We call a and b the add-ins and you call the result from addition a sum. Add-ins and sums, okay? Now it's, it's valuable to recognize here that this says that our sets need to be disjoint. What does disjoint mean? Not, not what'd you say? Not connected. not connected. So if you are disjoint, you've got circle A over here in left field and circle B over here in right field, right? They are not connected. If you're thinking about a Venn diagram, they don't overlap. Okay, that's what disjoint is meaning for us. And our first example is to actually take a look at why we need these to be disjoint for this to make any kind of sense at all. So it says it wants us to give us an example to show why A and B must be disjoint. So whenever something talks about showing why they must be disjoint, the whole idea is, okay, well, let's connect them and see what fails to work. Make sense? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give two examples, an example of, or not two examples, but an example of each set, two sets, A and B, where they, they aren't disjoint. They do connect or overlap. So we can use numbers, we can use letters. I'm going to use some numbers this time. So we're going to write the numbers 1 to 4, and we're going to let B connect them by overlapping by 3 and 4. All right, so set A has 1, 2, 3, 4. Set B has 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And they're not disjoint, right? Right. So tell me, what is the number of items in set A? What is N of A? It's 4. What is N of B? It's 5. <coughs> All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to practice a little bit of what we did back in chapter one, uh, or chapter two, I think it was chapter two. We're going to find the union of sets A and B. So what would the union be of these two sets with these numerals in them B? One through seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, because unions mean we get it all, right? Good. So then, what is the number of items in the union? It's seven. But notice that's not the same thing as if you added four and five together, correct? This would give you nine. So why am I getting nine instead of getting seven? What happened? Three and four are what? Three and four are what? They, overlap. they overlap. What did you say, Allison? Double you double counted. So we double counted the three and the four because they overlapped, right? That's why this argument is resting on the fact that these need to be disjoint. Now, I think there was a similar question to this on your test, and about two or three of you knew how to approach it, and most of you didn't. So I hope when you're looking back at the example of counting like this, this example right here will give you some idea of what that problem was doing, because it's the same idea behind that particular problem. So those sets must be disjoint for addition to actually make sense. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at models of, dis of addition, and then uh, we won't get to it today, but in models of subtraction as well as in this section. All right, so one model for addition is called the set model. 
is typically used for whole objects. And this is an example of the set model. Liz has three blue crayons and two red crayons. If she combines all the crayons, how many crayons does she have? So kids will encounter this particular addition problem, like the three plus two equal five, in first grade, but they may not encounter the word problem as it's written until second grade, just because they've got more established in their reading vocabulary at that point. So this is a first or a second grade kind of problem. But the idea behind it is that we can actually create a set model with a picture to be able to do this. So if you did a problem, we will, did I say red first or blue? Blue first. So she has three blue crayons. So look right here. Here are my blue crayons. Two, three. I know they don't have a pointy end. You know what? Watch this. I bet I can make them have a pointy end. You just hold tight. We're going to see. Oh, no, that didn't work. That was way too big of a point. Okay, forget it. I give up on the pointy end. We're just going to do a flat end. That's what happens in the spur of the moment when you decide to do something different. Okay. All right, so here's my three blue crayons. And she has two red crayons, right? And I don't have them drawn together, but that's all right. So here are my crayons that are described here. And if I were to count them, I would end up with five crayons. Now, physically, when kids first learn to do addition, this is what you do, right? You count on your fingers, you count with objects. It's concrete, very concrete. There's actual physical things that we're counting when we're doing the arguments. But counting objects, like crayons, is not the only thing that we use addition for. We also use addition for what's called a measurement or a number line model. And this is an example of that. So it's typically used for objects that can be partitioned. So obviously, when you're working with the little kids, you don't talk about, you know, a half a crayon. We just count a crayon as a crayon. But there are objects for which making half of something makes perfect sense to us. You're making lengths of something. You're making miles of something. You're talking about portions of an hour of something. It makes sense to partition those and not count them like they're a whole object. So this is called the partition model, measurement model, the number line model, and here's an example. Joe has four feet of wood and three feet of aluminum. How many feet of building material does Joe have? So we've got four feet of wood, so my wood should of course be brown. So here's my four feet, and I'll mark it off. So it starts at zero, and I've got one, two, three, four. It's four feet long. And we can put it end to end, and we can talk about the aluminum next. And aluminum, of course, is silver, so I'll draw it with a gray. And it's supposed to be three feet long. So with his aluminum, one, two, three, this is three feet long. But if I keep counting, here's my three. From here, we can, of course, count to five, six, and seven as we're counting sort of hash marks along the way. And it has a very nice draw to it to be a number line kind of a picture. Right? We keep just sort of counting along the path. And the answer, of course, would be seven feet. And again, this would be a concrete model picture of what's going on. Okay, I want to do one more short uh, piece and then we'll stop for today. It's a definitional piece. <clears throat> the idea of something being less than something else. For any whole numbers A and B, A is less than B, written A, and you've got this sort of arrow-looking shape, right? A, and of course you read that as less than B. If and only if there exists a natural number K such that A plus K is equal to B. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the reason that 2 is less than five is because there's a number I can write right here to make them equal. And of course that number is three, right? It's the number three for us. So I'll draw it in kind of dotted as though it's missing. My dot's a little bit spaced out more. 
there are three missing, but if I put the three in, they would be equal. That's really what it means to be less than. So we could do the same thing visually, right? We could talk about heights. All right, Nicole, pretty sure you're taller than me, so let's come here. Well, it's closer than I thought. It is closer than I thought. Oh my goodness. Who's taller than me for sure? Caitlin is. Caitlin, come up. All right, sit down, Nicole. Okay. I want to sit any taller than me. Yes, Caitlin's taller than me. Okay, so the reason that I'm less than Caitlin, I'm right, am I? Right, I feel like it, yeah. Okay, the reason that I am less than Caitlin in terms of height is because if I were to put on maybe about a one inch or a two inch heel, we would be the same, right? That's what less than means. Thank you so much for being my volunteer. Okay, so less than has that perspective. The second example or description that we're going to do is we're going to do an example where we change the definition and it says to use a definition or give a definition using subtraction. Do you see this addition, uh, this um, definition uses addition, right? It says A plus K equals B, okay? So we're going to give a similar definition but use subtraction. So most of the language that I'm going to write down is going to say the same thing that this one did. The part that's really going to be different is this at the end, just the very ending part. So we're going to start out the same way. It's going to say something like this. For any whole numbers, A and B, So I'm just copying, it's not plagiarism, not right now, okay? We're just copying the definition, we're going to change at the end. For any whole numbers, A and B, A is less than B, written the same way. A less than B, if and only if, there exists a natural number K, such that, so I still need an equation, I still need an A here and an equals and a B here, but I need to use subtraction to make them equal. What would I have to do to make that work? I would need to put the K, the K on the side with the B with subtraction, B minus K. Okay, so the example with Caitlin and I, that doesn't work very well with heights, right? It's not like I can just sort of chop off, well, I could do it with my son. I could chop off the top of his hair, right? We could just chop it off until we're equal, okay? But we can't do that with Caitlin's. Hers is not poofed up, right? We can't chop off her feet. That doesn't work. It's not really appropriate, okay? Um, but there are situations where we could, right? If you were talking about the wood and the aluminum example, could you chop off a piece of the aluminum or the wood to make those things equal? Absolutely, you could. So this would be a definition using subtraction to make them equal to one another instead of addition. 